Welcome to my 1 to 99 necromancy guide. First off, teleport to the Draenor Lodestone and we'll be running north into the Underworld Portal. Since it is your first time, you will get a dialogue and a little cutscene that will pretty much show a flying sword hits the player and kills them. You'll appear in front of death and even him himself did not see that coming. Afterwards, you'll be able to do a little tutorial that does cover over the skill that will get you from 1 to 5 necromancy. Basically, you'll be doing rituals, in which case you want to click on the center pedestal. And then since it is your very first time, you'll have access to only the first two options, and that's the lesser commune and the lesser necroplasm. Now these are the ritual tier one, in which case, since you do the tutorial, you will have the five necromancy. As for the items needed, you'll need a ton of bones, but keep in mind, these can be noted. And then just southwest of where we are, there is a storage crate and a ritual chest. Put the noted bones, which I do suggest you to have wyvern bones. If not, you can do baby dragon bones. The higher tier bones, the more souls you do get added to the wells. The XP rate does not change based on the different bone you are using. And then, for example, this one, the Necroplasm, it requires 200 weak Necroplasm, and you'll get 100 lesser Necroplasm. Afterwards, you just want to build the correct glyphs, in which case right here, it says 1 Elemental 1 and 2 Regents 1. And then for this, we just want to click on the glyph, and depending on which ritual you are doing, you will get a little pop-up window somewhere on your screen showing the duration, the light sources, the glyphs, and the output. For here, for example, Elemental 1, you'll need a ghostly ink, three of them. Now to get the supplies, you'll want to run south and make our way east. We'll be going to the shop. Before I show the training spots, while you are doing combat, you will unlock talent points. But you will need to do rituals to get souls. And then north of the ritual site is the Well of Souls. When you click on it, you will see a huge talent tree. Now, to the right, you will get a talent point every time you hit the XP threshold. Now, keep in mind, this XP right now shows 1.2 mil XP. This is completely false because it starts out very low. Each and every time you get a talent point, it will increase. So it's not 1.2 mil XP for every single talent. It increases over time. At the bottom middle, you'll see I have 9,902 souls this is pretty much from doing the rituals now let's go to talent number one this one is the conjurer skeleton warrior you'll just need two necromancy for that and if you click on the number you'll say what it requires so for example the tier two requires 50 souls and remember a wyvern bone does give you three souls and of course you do need 20 necromancy. For tier 2, you'll need 40 necromancy, 400 souls, and to have completed the rune, Mythos Quest. From tier 4, you'll need 60 necromancy, 2,000 souls. Tier 5, you'll need 70 necromancy, 4,500 souls. And then, of course, just unlock a previous tier. Tier 6 requires 80 necromancy, 8,500 souls. 
and you want to pretty much buy everything that you're able to and then right here where I don't have access to unlocking it you want to hit more info and it will tell you exactly so for instance I need to complete the tombs of the warlock quest and then lastly tier 7 requires 90 necromancy and 35,000 souls so when you click on ability you have the ability to unlock a talent underneath the 9,902 souls that I do have is how many spare talent points you do have. In this case, you just want to use those and level up your weapons and you will get a chat box. So just level up everything you can. And then that's pretty much about it. Just make sure you do have to do those quests if you want every single talent. Continue to go east. You can search in Blade Dive, and we'll be going to the general store that is just north of the bridge. Afterwards, you can left click trade Lupe and buy all three items that she does have, which include the basic ritual candle, basic ghostly ink, and weaker necroplasm. Once you have these, go back to the ritual, and I do suggest you to use wyvern bones from 5 to 10 or even to 20 necromancy. If you are an iron player, you will need to focus a lot on the weak necroplasm to get the lesser necroplasm. From this shop, we are going to get our first armor and that is just directly south and then if you want you can unlock the lodestone to the west but continue going southwest past the bank and we'll be going west to the dock for here we will see a armor shop located on our mini screen so once we're here left click the NPC it will be a ghost, so he might be hard to spot. And then you want to buy the armors from him. Only buy the weapon and shield, pretty much. Now, if you are a low level, as in your defense is not too high, you are able to just buy the set. But I'm pretty sure the NPC will give you a full set of armor for free. So just make sure to get an additional armor set if you would like. Now, there is a way to bypass somewhat for the armor if you are a high level, and that will be the Zamraka War Priest, which is high breed and scales through your defense level up to tier 70, but you cannot augment. Next, is Icarus armor which you are able to augment and it's tier 70 and lastly if you're able to you want to buy Sliske armor however due to necromancy it is extremely expensive right now now both Icarus and Sliske you are able to augment even with one necromancy and since they are hybrid they will not have a negative impact on your DPS or accuracy, meaning you're able to perk it with crackling, biting, impatient, invigorate, the undead, and the demon slayer perks. For the weapons, you won't be able to augment your weapons too much, so just keep that in mind. And you'll want to use this armor set from 1 all the way to 70 necromancy afterwards you're able to get and make the tier 70 armor which does benefit necromancy now for the glove necklace and boot slot it does depend and that would be the atrocious world gloves or recipe for disaster gloves for the boots silverhawk boots but since we are an iron account you have to use the Dragon Rider boots. And lastly, the Salve Amulet Enchanted. 
which does give you plus 20% accuracy and damage against undead monsters. From here on out, every 10 necromancy levels, you'll have access to upgrading your weapons to the next tier, in which case you want to be where I am on the minimap. And remember, you do have to do the quest Kila's Row. Afterwards, you want to talk to Kila. Talk to her. And it should be option one to talk about the equipment upgrade and the weapons. Now, right here, since we are at level 20, the task she will require you to kill is five chickens. Once you have done that, you'll have unlocked the ability to make your weapons to tier 20. In which case, it's pretty much you come back to her when she gives you the list completed. Go to this forge right here and go to tier 20. Scroll down to figure out what items you need and it will need to be unquipped. And now for these lesser insold bars, this is quite easy to get, and that is by clicking on the forge to the east. Afterwards, you want to make sure you're at the core ore, click on any bar so that the middle screen does change. And then you want to scroll down to where it says lesser and sold bar, which I know it is a little bit hard to see, but it's just to the south of it. And then you want to make those Go to the ritual site and then upgrade those lesser insold bars to uninsold bars. And then speak to the NPC again, pretty much, so that you have access to upgrading it. And now I'll go back on the screen. Once we're level 30, you'll want to talk to the NPC, get another task, which is to kill 25 trolls. Or you can also do the lesser commune rituals as they are easier. Once you're level 40 necromancy, you'll gain the ability to make level 40 weapons, which she will need you to require a meat pie and either to kill 50 undead souls, which you can kill the skeletons under the Lundbridge catacombs or five lesser rituals. And the same thing goes on for tier 50 and 60. But now, keep in mind for these necromancy flippers, you will need to complete and kill morgues, which is the sober up mini quest. As for tier 6, where it says the Anku residue, she will give you an Anku agitator, which you want to use the agitator on an Anku and kill it. Afterwards, you'll need to do that 10 times until a powerful, not an elite Anku, but a powerful to kill it, and it will drop an Anku residue on the floor. Now, for tier 70, you'll actually have the ability to do the tank armor or the power armor. I do suggest to use the power armor, which you only have to kill five moles and then five cow fight Queens, which is extremely easy with necromancy. Once you get to the tier 80 armor task, you'll need to kill necks five times, but you can do all this. Just make sure that you do the most DPS, in which case then you'll get the fragments. And then also you'll want to kill five queen black dragons. For the tier 90 armor, it's the best to go again for the DPS route, in which case you'll need to go Telos, who is the easiest of the three choices we have. You want to duo or trio Elite Dungeon 3 for Ambassador. One of your two partners will use a Death Touch Dart. Now, before he does do use his dart, you want to attack Ambi for about five seconds and then use the dart. And then the little necroplasm will appear in your loot chest. The person who does dart will not get the little necroplasm. And remember, you do have to use necromancy armor and weapons for that boss. 
except for our Raxor, in which case you're able to just use range or melee the boss and then make sure to bring a greater and sword claw. Use it on his body. And that is how you get that. Now, time for back to the XP training routes. Just remember, you will need to go to the forge, make the different amount of bar and cloth and stuff. Now, as for the cloth, where it does require, like let's say right here, it says in sold cloth, you will need to actually get rid of a subjugation piece for the ritual. For the cloth, you'll need to just buy a mystic armor set from either the Champions Guild or from the Wizards Guild that does require 66 magic. Afterwards, go to the appropriate ritual, destroy it accordingly, and then you'll have access to that Ensword Cloth. From levels 10 to 20, you'll want to appear right where I am on the minimap, which is just southeast, and remember to bring your weapons as we will be killing the ghostly trolls. So, once you're here, and before anything, go to settings, go to gameplay, combat and action bar, and then combat mode, you want to scroll all the way down, and right there where it says necromancy auto attack, you want to make sure it is unchecked. Afterwards, close the window and enter the large cave opening. And hopefully people aren't here. So, now as for the action bar, you will want to have these three abilities on revolution so it automatically triggers. Since you are a low level, you won't have access to too many abilities, in which case you want to kill these ghostly trolls that give 92 necromancy XP. They do give about 89. Granted, I am using the Inspire Arc Relic for plus 2% increased experience rates. Now, you want to do this from 10 to 20 so that we have access to completing the Killer's Row quest. Afterwards, after that, you want to do the quest, in which case, you want to go back to the rituals, but after this, once you have gotten 20, time for this part. From levels 20 to level 40, you will want to kill Banshees. As for the Revolution Bar, it is still the same with these three abilities. Now, you can also include Tusker's Wrath and Sacrifice if you would like. And then, of course, once you do hit 24 Necromancy, you do have access to doing the Rune Mythos quest. And then of course, just come back here for level 30 and 40. Just remember to upgrade your weapons as you do progress through the skills. From level 40 to 50, you will want to be killing Shadow Warriors. The action bar does change a little bit because you'll have access to the Bloat ability and Blood Siphon, in which case you just want to add those to your action bar. Now, as for these ghostly warriors, you will need to kill them underneath Legends Guild, which means you will need to have completed the Legends Guild quest. Afterwards, the XP rates you can expect to get will be about 80k XP per hour. If you do wish to do the Abyss, mainly if you're an Iron player as you will need those Ashes, you can do the Abyss for 85k XP rate per hour. Next up will be levels 50 to 60 and I will be killing Ankus. You can kill these in the Barbarian Village Stronghold or your personal dungeon. The XP rates here does change a little bit. And that would be about 142k XP rate per hour while you are AFK. Now, you can increase the rates a little bit depending on your perks as at the moment I was using War Priest. 
you do also have another option and that will be going to the abyss for 131k xp per hour and again those are mostly in case you do need ashes if you are an iron or hardcore player from level 60 to 70 the background will be different but you want to do the abyss which will give 180k xp per hour you can also do four shadow warriors with one bound skeleton for that method you'll be getting 225k xp per hour and if you do five bound skeletons you can get 264k xp rate per hour for level 70 to 80 this is the action bar i used the revolution just sets at level five slots then the xp rates i was getting at abyssal demons from 70 to 80 was 264k xp per hour now you do have another option and that would be again the bound skeletons in your personal slayer dungeon at 288k xp per hour but you have to get souls and for that you will need 99 slayer for from level 80 you have two choices you can kill abyssal savages up to 90 or you can do them to 99 as for the revolution bar this is exactly what i had and keep in mind i do not have the zuck cape at all i was just using the 99 slayer cape as for the xp rate per hour you can expect to get 460k per hour now for the method i did use tier 70 armor with tier 80 weapons but I had to soul split and use the fortitude prayer afterwards just use penance aura and you should maintain your health forever because of the letter G that is shown on screen right now as it is the ghostly the well the vengeful ghost as he heals you so much and in combination with the amulet of souls and the Asylum Surgeon Ring, you should be able to maintain your health all the way, although when I did this for 10 hours, I died once. I don't know if that's because my war ran out or if too many piled on me, which I'm not sure because the Blood Siphon may have propped when there was very few savages alive at that time. So. Just keep an eye on that. You do have a chance of do dying. Once you are 90 necromancy, you want to go to the chapel at the city of Um, who is pretty much southeast of the area, right by the fishing spot. Talk to Selena and hit option three. Can you teach me any prayers? Afterwards, hit option one to confirm, which does require, again, 90 necromancy. And this will be for 95 prayer. After a little bit of dialogue, there you go. You have completed the unliving on a prayer. So we now have access to the sorrow curses, which we now have a better XP rate per hour. So you can do this from level 90 up to 200 mil if you would like once you are level 90 you have another option and that will be all the way up to 99 or even 200 mil and it works perfectly because they did work the shambling horrors in the background as you do see which if you're very quick enough that you click on the horror and whatever which will say he's going for you'll get one extra drop if you click back and forth, you're able to get two XP drops. Now, if you are on touch screen, you're able to get three XP drops. You just want to spam click the horror and the ritual site, and then just hopefully you get those two or three XP drops, in which case it greatly speeds up the XP per hour. Now, speaking of XP per hour, 
this is what you're able to get just by 50-50 when you're missing the Shamling Horrors. Just in case you are still unable to see which exactly you're able to go for. And you do benefit from the wise perk. Just remember, to gain access to this part, you will need to overload. Clear the outer ring. It might be dust or something, you have to clear the mounds. And then you're able to add the candlesticks. And you can put more glyphs, in which case I put three multiply glyphs so that you're able to get the most amount of experience. Or if you want, you could do two multiplier glyphs, which will impact you getting souls amount and you put attraction three. Now, once you are 99, you're able to put attraction two on your 99 skill cape. And with that, Thank you all so much for watching this super long guide on 1 to 99 Necromancy. I will be in the future posting XP per hour rates on different monsters as when you level, you have higher critical hit chance which greatly impacts even if you're using level 70 weapon, but even though you're 100 Necromancy, you have that 65 critical chance which does change pretty much the meta. And of course, the higher weapon you have, the more XP rates you have. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment as it really does help.